any flashlight nut worth their salt has the same decision every time to go for a night walk. And that is, do I bring my flutter or my thrower? And if you're like me, you just end up bringing both and regretting it. But what if there was a flashlight that did both? Well, enter the Olight Marauder Mini, the one flashlight that can do it all. Olight asked me if I wanted to review the Marauder Mini, and I said, yes, please. I had seen their original Marauder, which is a much larger flashlight, and this Mini really shrinks it down, takes the core concepts of the original Marauder, but makes it jacket pocketable. So I really like that concept. Uh, I, I've long wanted a jacket pocketable or smaller light that does both flood and throw. Let's take a look at some of the contenders that I've had in the past. So, uh, Noctagon. So this is a Hank Wang, Noctagon, and MSR. These are two lights from Hank Wang. And both of these were designed to scratch that itch. This one here is a D4S V2, but it's got the dual driver in it. And so what we got is we got some very throwy Osram emitters against some very floody Samsung emitters. And you can see I've also added some DC fix to boot just to kind of accentuate the flood. And what I'm getting here is on the uh, Samsung side, we get a nice floody beam. And then in Enduril, you kind of click over and you get a throwy beam like that. Now, this, this was really good when it came out. I, I liked this. But I always wished that the throw was a little throwier. And, and, and the biggest complaint is not that the throw wasn't throwy enough, but it's that when I went to the flood channel, which is, you know, what I'm going to use maybe 80, 90% of the time, that since I'm only operating on two emitters, I just felt like I was missing out on a lot of efficiency and a lot of lumens. So Hank finally came out with the DM112. Now this has just basically replaced all dual channel drivers uh, for me. And I sold all my D4 V2s, all my D4 SV2s, because what it did was it has two separate optics, a center large TIR optic for the throw, and then the outer ring of tiny TIRs for the flood. And so when you turn it on, what you're going to get, let's turn it down so you can see it better. You get these emitters on the outside that give a nice floody beam, and then you can switch over and get a very throwy beam from that center TIR, okay? Now, uh, if you want to know why this one's green, you can look up my emitter choices in other videos. Uh, green is more lumens, more intense, and your eye reads it better on distant objects. But this was now the king of combo lights for me until Olight shipped this to me. Um, if you want my short review, my short review is I would never pick the DM112 over the Marauder Mini. The Marauder Mini just bests it in every way. Now, that's an arguable statement, and some people might disagree with me, but I'll make these claims during the video. You can see that they're uh, comparable sizes. You can see that these two, you know, they're almost exactly the same diameter, at least at the head. I guess it gets a little thicker here. And um, height-wise, you can see that the Marauder Mini is actually a little shorter, just a tiny bit. Uh, Weight-wise, um, the Marauder Mini, eh, they're similar. They're really similar. I mean, I didn't put them on a scale, but no, one's not, you know you know, way heavier than the other. Um, Runtime on the battery, that's similar as well. Because on the DM112 here, I don't have a 21700. I got the 26800, so that's almost a uh, 7,000 milliamp hour battery. So it's the big boy. Of course, that brings its own difficulties because you got to find a charger that charges it. Um, but on the Marauder Mini here, it's got a interesting st uh, style battery that I'd never seen before. Okay. It's got a 32 650 also around 7,000 milliamp hour. So, uh, battery wise, these two are a wash. Now it is true that, you know, in typical Olight fashion, this has both poles on this end. It's proprietary. So you're going to have to get Olight batteries, but honestly, I don't even know anyone that sells 32 650s. So, um, even if it wasn't, you know, a proprietary cell that you needed in there, 
you're kind of stuck getting it for Olight because I don't know who else uh, vends those. Now, what do you get for the proprietary cell that Olight includes? Well, of course, you get their awesome magnetic charging. I've said this in other videos. I just love it so much. This is included in the box. Um, you, know, you plug it into a USB power source. It can go up to two amps, depending on what you plug it into. And, you know, I just love the convenience of it. Don't have to take the cell out. Don't have to, like, you know, find some flappy doodle and pull it up to get the plug in there. And remember that if you're the kind of person that charges frequently and you like to do so without even like looking, remember you just kind of go and then there you go. Okay. It just, you know, it's the, the dead simplest thing ever. It just, you know, any way you come at it, it, uh, it, uh, sinks up and it grabs on. Now, often since the end is magnetic, you can get this light to stick onto objects. So, um, you know, you can use it as, um, like, you know, like if you're working on a car or something, put it to the hood. I will tell you that this magnet is quite strong, but this light is just heavy enough that it will not uh, hold the weight of the light. So don't try. That's not a feature for this light, but I can't really imagine wanting it on a light this size. Let's talk about what comes in the box really quickly. Uh, it's an amazing box as usual by Olight. They uh, really lead the industry on quality of the box. It's got a magnetic flap here that kind of just flaps like that. And on the inside, they got you know, their little lift up panel with uh, a quick start right here. And inside they have a side compartment that has accessories. You got a lanyard, you got this MCC cable here, and uh, you got a holster and then the full-sized manual. And um, that's just where the light was. And of course, there was protective films that I pulled off the light in order to use it and show it to you. So that's what comes in the box. Let's take a look at the styling of the light itself, which is just simply awesome, okay? It's got this really great look to it with this kind of swirl pattern, but nothing sticks out or or like, you know, catches you. It feels really great in my hand. It's got a nice rubber kind of grip here around for, you know, hold, of course. But what's neat, it's got these cool little accents, like it's got a ray section that says Marauder Mini. And then on the other side, it says um, the specs of it, which is that it's 7,000 lumens, and in the throw channel, it can go 600 meters. If I hold it just like this, you can start to see that there's kind of like a little arch pattern right here. And that's because it's actually molded so that your fingers kind of fit in those grooves. So it's subtle, but it feels great when you hold it. It's got a uh, kind of a faux strike bezel here. I wouldn't say that's a strike bezel, but I love any kind of bezel that lets light seep out when you turn this guy on so that you can see that it's on. Let me just kind of turn that up for a second. I always think that's a really good trait. When this is dead flat, I think it's possible that you could have this on, kill the battery, or maybe even melt a hole in your table. I love the color scheme. It's subtle, but not just you know black and boring. The lanyard hold is right here, which is an interesting choice. Usually it's in the tail. Let's take a look at the business end here, and you can see that it's got a bunch of smaller TR optics around in a circle, and these yellowy looking ones are the main flood channel. There's six of them. And then these ones are dedicated color channels, which we'll get to in the UI section. The center here has a convex lens that focuses the throw channel what markings there are on the light are thoughtful and diminutive. Even like where it says hot surface, it's kind of a small marking. I like that there's not giant logos everywhere. So that's a win. Also, it's really obvious what each thing does from the marks. You can see that this is clearly the throw and the flood toggle. And you can tell from the icons which is which. You can see that this side is going to be the battery indicator. This side's going to be the brightness. So I think it's a really well-designed light. Feels great in the hand. Solid aluminum. It's got some chonk to it. Uh, the threads are really smooth. Like all Olights I own, it's just a cut above. Let's dive in to the operation and the UI of this light. I told you that this light has replaced the DM1.12 for me. And the biggest reason isn't just performance. Performance is better on this light. But honestly, I've never loved Enduril for dual channel lights. I feel like, you know, the two click holds to get from one channel to another, etc., are just a little clumsy. 
I, I, I don't hate them. I understand them. But this custom interface that Olight's designed for this has made it dead simple. So let's take a look at the operation. This light has all the major features you'd want in a complicated light like Endural and just makes it easy to grasp. So, for example, in Endural, you, you know, might come on on a throw channel. You go click, click, hold to get over to the flood. You can ramp up and down, of course. Now, if you want to do voltage check, you have to know that from off you go one, two, three, and it'll blink out the voltage check. If you want to lock it, you know, four clicks. You want to unlock it three or four clicks, things like that. Well, Here's what's great about this light. This light has all those features. It has voltage check. It has auto lockout. No, switching me channels. But I'm telling you, I could hand this to my father-in-law and he'd figure it out in moments without a manual. The same could not be said for this light. So let's take a look at it. Okay, first off, if you want to be in flood, you just have this toggle and it's got a really nice click to it. Let's see if we can hear it. It's a really satisfying click. So that click, you put it in the flood, and then the light, will, if it's not been used for 10 seconds, will automatically be locked out against accidental activation. So I'm hitting the button here, and I can't turn it on. So what you do is this button is not only a depress button, it's a rotary button. So you just rotary, kind of, you know, just turn it, and this little white light kind of turns on for a second. So again, I'll turn it and you can see there's uh, indicators and there's a little white light that you can barely see there. Uh, it's dim so that it doesn't bother you at night. Now that tells you that the light is unlocked. Okay. Now if you sit with the light off for 10 seconds or more, it auto locks out again. So I can't turn it on. And you can see that uh, when I click, I get a battery indicator, but that little white light is not on, meaning it's locked. So again, Rotate the dial, a little white dot comes on, then you press the button, and you're in flood. Now, let's say you want to come on at the lowest it can go. It's got seven different levels. So you just, you know, rotate it, press and hold, and it comes on on the lowest, and that's indicated by the fact that there's one blue light on here, okay? So uh, let's click it off. Let me click it on again, and you can see there's one blue light. It's, you know, again... Not the brightest indicator, but I don't want this super bright. And also, I have studio lights on, right? I'm blasting this area with light. But now, when it's on, then you just rotate it. And every time you rotate it, right, it goes up a step. And this goes up. And there's your levels. Okay? Very intuitive. Now, one of the greatest things about this light is you do not have to look down to operate it at night. Because, first off, when I rotate it, I can find that button right away. You know, it, it's it's proud, it's knurled, you know, I can feel it right away. So I turn the light on, well, let me just rotate and turn the light on. And as I'm rotating up, the you know, the, the wheel will rotate forever, right? But if you listen, can you hear that little, watch. That's because there's haptics in this light. The light vibrates, there's a little tiny motor, and you feel a buzz. So again, if you're in a loud environment, or if you've got gloves on or something, you can tell when you're at the end of the travel of the brightness based on the haptics. Now, I got this light on. Now, let's say I want to switch to flood at any point. You just kind of flick this toggle, and now you're in throw, right? Oh, by the way, we're going to get this later. Look at how amazingly focused that beam is. It's just amazing. We'll look at it outside. So, let's say I turn this up all the way, okay? Now, while I'm all the way up, if I flick, you'd expect to be in flood and full, and that's what happens. So flick down, full flood. Let's say I come down to the medium, flick again, medium, go all the way down, flick back to flood, lowest I can go, okay? So it's really intuitive, really super easy. Now, one thing that's baked into this light that I never had over in this guy is it actually has color modes. So if you turn it on into flood mode, and, well, actually, you could be in either, to be truthful. You could be in flood or throw. But when you're in one of these channels, if you press and hold on the center button, it puts you into the different colors. And you have red, press and hold again, it goes to green, press and hold again, and it goes to blue. See, and there, here, I'll show it from this section. Well, let me turn it down a little bit. Okay. So I'm in white right now, white light, press and hold. We're going to go red, green, blue. There you go. Now, if you ask yourself why would I need separate colors on the light, uh, well, there's a lot of people give a lot of answers. Red is commonly used for preserving night vision. 
Blue is commonly used for spotting the difference between blood and water when you're hunting because, um, you know, the blue will show blood as black pools of liquid, whereas water will look like blue. And uh, lastly, green is said to not spook certain types of, you know, forest animals, again, for hunting. And when you're operating the color channels, they actually have different levels of brightness in the color channels. So let me go to green. You can see I can go to the lowest green or I can raise that up. Now, uh, they don't have seven levels like the flood does, but they have four I calculated. So uh, four different levels of brightness there. Now, one kind of, I don't know, complaint, I suppose, is that I felt the lowest colored light to the highest colored light, whether it was red, green, or blue, was not that much different. So it's better than nothing. But uh, if you're going to use this for, let's say, astronomy use, I don't feel like the red channel gets low enough to be really able to preserve your night vision. But uh, you know what? Listen, even without the colored channels, this light is the combo light of my dreams. So it's just an awesome thing to have them in there as well. One other kind of niggle I would say about the color channels is let's say uh, you did want to turn the light on in green. So uh, let me go ahead and turn this light on and uh, let's get it over into the green channel. Okay, so I'm in green, turn it off. Well, it turns out there's no memorization on that. It goes right back to white light and then you have to press and hold to get back into the color channels. So um, that's another niggle I have. You can't go straight to red, can't go straight to green. You gotta go to white light first. I, I do like though that if I'm in the throw channel, I can turn it on and in throw, I can still get to those colors. So that is a nice little addition. Two last things about the UI. One is the haptics are also used for low power warning. So in addition to having a power indicator right here, you also have haptics where at the lower it gets, the more often it'll buzz you. So it buzzes you at uh, periodically to let you know that it needs to be charged. And as it gets lower, it buzzes more frequently. One other thing is it does have strobes. They are not in the main operation, thankfully, so you'd probably never see them. To get the strobe to work, you can't be in the throw channel. You have to be in the flood. And then while it's on, if you mash the button three times, one, two, three, you go to the strobe. All right, let's take a look at its lumens really quickly here. I will, let's see here, let's unlock it, get on the lowest. And notice that the lowest level, it's almost 100 lumens. So uh, there's no real moonlight on this light. This is not an indoor light at all. I wouldn't creep around the house with it, okay? Now, on the highest, and there's uh, modes all the way from 100 up to almost 7,000 lumens. I measured a little less. But let me show you why I love this light so much. Let me show you a quick turbo ANSI test. So 30 second test with both these lights to show you why the Marauder Mini is so amazing. So let's go ahead and take the Hank Wang DM1.12 and let me turn it on. Okay, we're at about 230 lumens right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and double click. And once I do, I'm gonna take the reading at ANSI. So we'll double click and double click. We got 4,150 lumens right at the start. Here we are five seconds in. You can see it's dropping rapidly, about 3,600, 10 seconds in. 15, 20, and 10 more seconds to go. You can see we're half is what we started with. And... All right, at 20, at 30 seconds, 1,490 lumens or something. So uh, we started at 4,150, but it dropped rapidly. It is hot all around the fins here. Well, not hot. Let's just say really warm, not hot, so warm. Now, if I start this test again, double click, uh, it will jump up, but it jumped to a lower amount immediately, and you can see it's dropping faster. So... Um, these lights are known to drop really quickly, really rapidly. So they're really impressive when you just hit turbo. But once you start like trying to use turbo for minutes on end, they, they really kind of just don't hang with you. 
So let's go ahead and get the Marauder Mini set up here. And uh, there's the uh, 90, whatever, 94 lumens, uh, um, one digit all over, right? Now let's double click. And you can see that we're 6,200 lumens right at the start. It's not dropping nearly as rapidly as the other light, isn't it? Yeah, here we are 10 seconds in and we're still over 6,000 lumens. Yeah, we're coming up on 20 seconds and we're still over 6,000. And we're in the final 10 seconds and then we'll take our ANSI reading. Five seconds to go. And mark, there you go, over 6,000 lumens. So that's quite a difference, right? I mean, if, if this started at 6,000 or 6,200, whatever it was, and this started at 4,100, there's not a huge difference between those two tier I if they maintain them. But you can see as soon as 30 seconds in, there's a huge difference in lumens. All right, I thought you might find interesting to see what the turbo for the throw channel is. And there you go. Turbo for throw channel is about a thousand lumens. Uh, let me actually change the, there we go. Yeah, there you go. 9,075 it started at, dropped a little, okay? So it's about 1,000 lumens for the throw channel. Let's do some tint and color measurements. Uh, I don't think that tint or color really matters about a thrower, but because you're watching this channel, maybe you do care, and I'll give you a couple readings. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and turn my video lights off or anything because we don't need it that accurate. We just need to get a ballpark figure here. And we see that the flood channel is around 6,000 lumens. It's actually right at 6,000. It's reading a little lower because my video lights are on. But you can see that the flood is um, a little bit above Delta UV. Not objectionably so, but it is. Okay, let me hit turbo on the flood and read it again. And you can see that it's uh, you know a little over 6,000 now. And you can see that Delta UV has dropped to almost neutral. And I do want to point out that this light has a very clean, crisp, white flood at uh, the turbo on the flood. I love it. It's just really crisp and white. Um, you know, on the blue side, cool, but uh, not objectionable in any way. Now, the uh, throw is above BBL. Uh, you can see it's you know about 100 points above BBL, and it's running almost 7,000. In fact, on turbo, it kind of nails 7,000. So it's very cool. Again, very white. Do know that if you're used to Delta UV readings, uh, this does not signify green when you're up around 7,000. It signifies more of kind of a cyan, kind of a bluish. So uh, again, not objectionable. I like the beam very much. All right, let's take it outside and get some beam shots. Okay, we're outside for some beam shots. And I've got my color balance locked at daylight. So that's 5,200K. I also have my exposure locked. So let's start with the D4V2 dual channel. And I'm going to switch over to the flood channel. Okay, so here's the flood channel about a medium. All right, that's how it looks. We're gonna go up to turbo. So that double flash there indicates I'm now at the highest this goes on flood. And we can see it kind of does a pretty good job on the street there. And you can see it was even hitting those trees, those four palm trees at the end. Whoops, let's try it again. The four palm trees at the end of the street are 120 meters away right there, okay? So, and you can also see that now it's been on for a little bit. You can see it's dramatically not as bright as it was when I first turned it on. That is really the problem with these Hank Wang lights. They just dropped so fast. Let's switch over to the throw channel. And that's pretty impressive, at least until you see the other two lights. So let's uh, take a look. And by the way, this is already pretty warm. So, you know, they get hot pretty fast, these guys. Let's take a look at the DM1.12. And I'm going to switch over to, to the flood channel here. And that's on turbo. And it's, it's floodier. You know, it's interesting that the flood channel on the DM 1.12 is actually pretty narrow. Um, you'll see that the Marauder Mini actually floods more. So let's take a look at that. 
can look, let's go all the way up. So that's turbo. You can see it is hitting those trees at the end. And if it looks warmer, that's because it is. These are SST 20s at 4,000 K. So it's warmer than the LH 351D Samsungs that were in this D4 SV2. And uh, these were 5,700 K. So they're definitely cooler. Now it's on this DM 1.12. Let's switch over to the throw channel. And that's that Osram W1 grain. So it is a pencil beam. And you can see how it can only get two of the palm trees at a time. Very intense, very intense beam. And uh, you can see how tight it is. Okay, let's take a look at the Marauder Mini. So I'll put it on flood. And by the way, when I rotate, take a look at how much brighter this display is. You know, uh, under the video lights, you could see it, but not well. You can see that it's very readable at night outside, even under these street lights. So let me go ahead and turn it on here. Let's turn it down so you can see this is the lowest, right? And let me turn it up to kind of a middle. So that's kind of a middle. And then let's double click to go to turbo. And you can see it's much floodier than the other two and much brighter. It's obvious right away. And you can also see that it's not dropping. It will sustain this. We saw that on the ANSI test. What a wonderful flutter this is. Now, let's go and flick it to the throw channel. And let's take a look at how focused, how insanely cool and, like I mean, cool as in, I like it, focused this beam is. Let's put it on the tree here. Look at that sharp circle. It's like a spotlight from a theatrical spotlight. Now let's put it on turbo and look at that. We're getting almost all four of those. Yeah, I'd say all four of those palm trees at once. And uh, it's not as bright as this W1 green. That's more intense. Makes sense. The light spread out much further. But, uh, you know, I, I've started to sour. I've started to sour on pencil beams. Um, you know, they're hard to locate, uh, you know, prey or something. Like I, I was chasing a, uh, uh, a rabbit the other day and, you know, with a little, the spill helps. Uh, that, that was, I was actually using an LEP at the time. LEPs are the worst for that, man. They're all beam with no spill. I couldn't locate the rabbit, but um, with any spill at all, it helps. With a wider beam, it helps. So um, I would say that this is a definitely a nicer beam than this. Hey, let's turn the camera around for a different view here. We've got these foreground objects here, which are only about, you know, 10, 20 meters away. Uh, let me go ahead and turn this up a little bit. And you can see how this works as a really great flood for nearby objects. You know, I want to see maybe this fence line right here. No problem. If I go to turbo, just blast this whole area. And you can see that the tree, that distant tree and that pole are illuminated. But, you know, if I really wanted to see something in that tree, you would obviously switch to this spotlight and illuminate those distant objects. Now it's way too much for up close like this. So you could turn it down. I mean, that's still a possibility if you want a directed beam. This is at the lowest it goes. You can see how bright it is. And uh, I'm still, I'm seeing a little bit on that, on the lowest, but I would turn it up a little bit. That's about medium. And then here is turbo. But uh, that flood is incredible. Yeah, this light's really great. Gives you everything you need. What a great outdoor light this is. All right, I was editing my video, folks, and I realized that in the beam shots, I never showed RGB. It's daytime, so I'm doing it inside the garage. All right, here we go. It, we're on the flood channel right now, and you can see the flood channel, at least at this distance in my garage, is about the width of this panel on the wall over to about maybe the hinges on this garage. See the hot spot if I move it around? Hot spots around that big. Now, let's switch to the red channel, and you can see it's very similar sized. And then here is the green, and here is the blue. Now for comparison, here is the throw, okay? Now let's go back to the red, green, blue, and let's see the different brightnesses. There you go, that's red all the way up. Okay, let's go to green, and then there's one mode up, another mode up, and then the top mode. And then let's go to blue, and that's the highest, and then one mode down one mode down, and then that's the last mode. Okay, so there you go. So again, uh, it's just one of these things where it's about as floody as the hot spot. You see the hot spots right out there. Around the same as the flood, not the spill. 
and uh, it's considerably floodier than the throw channel. Olight Marauder Mini. Gosh, I really like this light. Uh, if you were looking at a DM 1.12, I definitely recommend this one over it. It's more efficient, longer runtime from that driver efficiency, better UI in my opinion. Uh, I also think that, you know, I bought this light when it first came out for like 150 bucks. Um, on sale, this is less than that. So um, I, th this happens to be on sale right now, but I just know that um, they're comparable price. They're not, you know, totally different. Um, I don't like dual channels in lights that don't have dedicated throw optics. It's it's not a fun thing for me anymore. And I want my flood channel to have more flood than the two provides. So I don't no longer recommend dual channel um, kind of EDC lights like this. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is my recommendation right now. I love this light. I'm so glad to have it. And uh, if you want to get one, um, they're going to release it in a couple days here. I wanted to get this video out right away so you could make your decisions. But the uh, there's going to be a release date in my uh, description with affiliate links if you want to use them. And uh, get it when they first launch it so you can get it at the introductory price, which is less, uh, you know, it'll co go up after a little bit. Thanks for joining me. Please subscribe and I will see you in the next video.